My name is Dr. Elizabeth Wangia. I'm a monitoring and evaluation specialist uh, with the UHC Secretariat. And the UHC means universal health coverage. Universal health coverage is quite important in Kenya where we would want all Kenyans to be able to access quality healthcare services without facing any financial uh, burden. So we are looking at how many people are covered, we are looking at what is this they are covered with and how much they are able to pay. Largely, we still focus on curative care uh, as it is. We don't have so much focus on uh, preventive care yet. Being a tropical country, we, still, we are still faced with a lot of uh, conditions like, you know, malaria, uh, the, what we call the communi communicable conditions. So this is the malaria, the tuberculosis, the HIV. Um, we, we still have diarrheal diseases, pneumonia. All these are more or less what you call communicable diseases. Though with time, as uh, people's lifestyles are changing, we are seeing also a rise in uh, the non-communicable diseases. We are seeing more cases of cancers. We are seeing more cases of hypertension, diabetes. Having worked in the rural area as my first posting after internship, followed by uh, working in an urban area but in a resource poor setting, I actually learned that access to healthcare is still a big challenge and it's mainly limited to uh, financial access. For you to have even a healthy baby, you need to have a mother who has had proper nutrition, uh, who, are, who has been able to, you know, attend all the clinics, but because still because of financial uh, barriers, they are still not able to get just the basic nutrition and uh, you know the basic care during pregnancy. The global burden of disease uh, is was quite a new concept by the time I joined the Ministry of Health in 2016. I got fortunate to be nominated to attend one of the trainings on global burden of disease in Greece. And I remember, one thing I remember about that training were all these visualizations. I had just come from clinical practice. We were, I was used to the stethoscope uh, and writing notes. I was not used to seeing charts. If there were any charts, the most I, I, I was exposed to were, you know, say bar charts and some pie graphs. But here I was seeing all these tree maps and everything and I was just out by this experience. And since 2016, I've been a collaborator with uh, the Global Burden of Disease. I've used a lot of this information uh, when it comes to policy, because as you know, we, even within the Ministry of Health, the, our main mandate since devolution is development of policy, capacity building, technical assistance to the counties. So if you look at uh, even the Kenya, the Kenya Health Sector Strategic Plan, we have used a lot of information from the global burden of disease to inform uh, the situation within the country. I don't think we have a problem with, with data. We have a lot of data. But then, how do you bring that, that data to the table of this policy maker? How do you bring this information to them in a manner where they can fully understand and appreciate? I love data visualization because, as it said, a picture is worth a thousand words. If you just give maybe numbers and figures, it, it, it may not really make sense even to the policy maker, but if you have good visualizations, at a click of a button, you are able to see that this is what is affecting the country. You are able to compare with other countries around, like say within East Africa. And as Kenya, we are quite fortunate. If you look at GBD compare, you can even go down to the subnational level. You are able to see how does one county compare to another. And with that, you are able to make a decision as to which county needs to take a priority in a certain uh, area. As a collaborator, I should be able to provide IHME with uh, up-to-date information because the more information that is provided uh, to IHME, the better the models that will be produced for the country. 
for example, in this country, we don't have much information on risk factors, the impact of risk factors like, you know, breastfeeding, uh, poor nutrition, uh, that, the, the, that, that impact on, you know, general diseases and, mor mor uh, you know, mortality and morbidity. Can we maybe do some assessments that can give us more information about, you know, say, risk factors? And therefore, that would be in an ideal setup of my role as a collaborator. To GBD, we also have that allowance to do projections. And based on those projections, you can even approach the policy makers and tell, tell them that if we do this, uh, if we take this route, put in these interventions, we expect these results. Data is still very key in all aspects of healthcare. As a monitoring and evaluation specialist, you look at things really from a bird's eye view, a holistic point, because you know what your the plans are, you know what you are meant to achieve, so you have to keep track all the time. Each and every time uh, I do my work, there's always a new, a new challenge, seeing that decisions that have been made are actually based on on data that you have collected. So what I'm hoping to achieve in the next five years or so uh, as a monitoring and evaluation specialist is to have clear policies that really, uh, that are more or less evidence-driven, evidence, evidence -driven, where as a country we have digitized all our health systems, we are able to get health data at a click of a button, I believe I have a role in fixing the country and fixing the world as a whole.